Today, we're going to be looking at an amazing artist, guitarist, and person by the name of Molly Tuttle. While I've definitely listened to much of Molly's music and thoroughly enjoyed it, it's actually her life story that I find especially inspiring and encouraging, and I hope that it can encourage you too. Well, first of all, who is Molly Tuttle? Well, Molly is an American guitarist and vocalist specializing in the bluegrass tradition. She's especially renowned for her astounding guitar skills using a wide variety of techniques such as flat picking, cross picking, and claw hammer playing. Now, I first discovered her while I was researching on rare vintage instruments, kind of like this one here, and found some videos of her demoing a few. Needless to say, I was blown away by how clean and precise her picking technique was, and I began to look up on her and her music online. Now, Molly was born in the San Francisco Bay Area and began playing guitar at around the age of 8, and she began her musical journey in a family band alongside her father and siblings. Now, other notable achievements would be her graduating from Berklee College of Music and winning a dozen other awards and competitions. And all these accolades are great and important. And I think what separates her from other artists are not these awards and accolades. In my opinion, it's her humility, her perseverance, and strength amid life's challenges. Now, I'm going to be sharing two of these challenges in her life that have really inspired me. And I'm going to start with the first one, which is something big, but it's nowhere as big as the second one. But let's do this one first. This is the Berkeley Ratings audition that she had to go through. Now, the details of this story I took from uh, a splendid interview conducted by Mary Spender. Um, you can go check it out. And according to Molly, upon entering Berkeley, she had to undergo what's called a ratings audition where she had to face two professors to be assessed on musicianship skills such as technique and improvisation. And at that point in time, she didn't know any music theory or jazz. And mind you, Berkeley is mainly a jazz school. And she also barely knew any skills. So the questions thrown at her, such as play a Lydian mode or play a C major 7 chord, these caught her off guard and she couldn't play any of that stuff. She ended up getting the lowest rating, a 1 out of 5 for every single category, and according to Molly, no other student has ever gotten such a low rating. Now, this might seem like a funny story, and sure she laughs at it now, but let's take a closer look at what might have been the psychological impact that it would have had on her at that point in time. Molly was already a fairly seasoned musician, having already released multiple albums with a family band and played many concerts and tours and won awards, many awards for her talents as a musician. In every aspect of the world, she was already a professional musician who had decided to pursue a life and career in music. And that's not an easy thing to do. Now, being rated the lowest possible score on this ratings audition would have been an utterly discouraging and invalidating thing to receive. It's essentially telling you that you are bad at what you've dedicated your life to and that you are actually bad at what you thought you were good at. Something like that can lead to severe imposter syndrome and I can only imagine that she would question her own achievements thus far and wonder if she truly deserved them. I know I have felt that way before and it's a terrible feeling of self-doubt. Seeing how far she's come despite that crushing initial analysis of her skills is really inspiring. But it kind of pales in comparison to the next challenge that I'm going to share that she has had to face for almost her entire life. And that is alopecia areata. Now, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But Molly has been grappling with alopecia areata since the age of three. And it's an autoimmune disease which causes one's immune system to attack its hair follicles as if they were an external invader. It ranges from small bald patches to full body hair loss, and it affects people of all ages, genders, and ethnicities. And to make matters worse, there's no known cure for alopecia as nobody really knows what causes it. Now, Again, I can only imagine, since the age of three, the psychological impact it must have had on her and anyone else going through it. 
Even if you had the most encouraging and supportive family and social circles, you would inevitably find yourself comparing your appearance to others and asking yourself the inevitable what-if questions. Now, Molly, as an artist and public image, she would surely have been very self-conscious of what other people would think if they knew of her condition and appearance behind the wigs. Today, she has learned to accept and embrace her appearance and even actively strives to help others going through similar challenges. She's open and public about her condition and helps to raise awareness of alopecia and the National Alopecia Areata Foundation. Now that's really inspiring. And I just want to conclude off by saying that why Molly Tato is so inspiring is that apart from her sheer artistic talent, she has overcome much emotional, psychological, and even physical challenges and continues to pursue doing what she loves. And on top of that, she exudes a real quiet humility beneath the flurries of flat-picking notes which illuminates her genuine personality. And that's something particularly hard to do amid an industry rife with toxic attention-seeking behaviour, ruthless commercialization practices, the music industry is not always a very nice place to be in. And that's my sharing on why Molly Tato is so inspiring to me. I love to hear of other artists who have inspired you too, or if Molly herself has inspired you. So please do leave a comment with other inspirational artists for myself and other viewers to check out. So thank you very much for listening, and until next time, I'll see you again. Goodbye.